I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. I'm Arthur Boyle of Performance Appraisal Services. We're residential real estate appraisers with a company founded in 1994 by Mike Ginelli and I in the basement of my house in Malden. We've since grown to have offices in Malden and Pembroke. We serve the Eastern Mass counties, including Cape Cod. A good client for us is an attorney or a private landowner or a private property owner who's going through a probate process or a divorce division of property. Call us at 781-293-6900. Ask for Arthur Boyle or Amanda Boyle Grazioso. Our first name is Performance. And welcome to the Pembroke Board of Selectmen's meeting of Monday, March 13th. And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. A few weeks ago, the Board of Selectmen extended an invitation to the Chamber of Commerce to ask uh, local business folks to come in and speak to the board and to the public and uh, explain uh, what their business is and what services that they provide to the people of Pembroke. Tonight we have Janet LaBurge with us. Uh, Janet, would you like to come up front please and business is? Thank you. Must be the smaller mic, is that correct? Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Multi well, multimedia tonight. Okay. Um, as long as my good side to the camera, the back side. So that's, uh, that's my best view. So um, thank you for um, extending the invitation to the Chamber of Commerce. We greatly appreciate that. We'd like to work more with the town and with the town's folks. So this is a good, good start. And I know that Mike Damon was here a few weeks ago and said you guys were didn't throw tomatoes and they're pretty decent. So <laughs> I, I, I hope for the same myself. Uh, my name is Janet LaBurge. I run Dirty Deeds, which is a junk removal company in town, as well as Good Deeds, which is the first store in town. I've been in business 12 years now. I've lived in Pembroke 16, 17 years, something like that. Uh, I have two boys, and um, I sit on the Council on Aging Board. I'm the president of the Council on Aging Board here. I know you've helped out with that before, Lou. And have uh, sat on the Pembroke Chamber Board. I also sit on the Bay State Community Services Board there, so I try to be actively involved in town. Our business is no different than really 1-800-GOT-JUNK or one of the other kind of big companies where we charge less than they do because we have to pay those franchise fees. But we try to be a little different in our mission in that I'm a crazy recycler. Uh, people might just say I'm just crazy, but I'm a crazy recycler. And I grew up in New Hampshire where we kept our good cars in the front yard and our parts cars in the backyard. So you didn't throw out things that weren't broken. To that end, when I started this business 12 years ago, I wanted to make sure that anything that was usable would be kept out there and not thrown into the landfill, which hurts our environment. And I found it was quite challenging to do that because a lot of the nonprofits around here, the Savers, Salvation Army, are very particular about what they can or can't take as they're selling those items. So I found a lot of different ways to move stuff along. Um, sometimes the town wasn't happy with that. Sometimes went curbside on my busy street and 
some neighbors were pleased with that, some neighbors weren't. And um, some people would show up at my house at all hours of the day and night, pick up free things in my garage. Uh, most people were happy about that. My family was not happy about that. So three and a half years ago, we struck up the idea of opening our own thrift store. And we named it Good Deeds. So Dirty Deeds does the dirty work, Good Deeds does good stuff. It meets my goals of keeping things out of the landfill because we'll sell everything from cleaning supplies right on up to furniture. What I have found in doing this business was that um, we're in a lot of garages and basements. So we see a lot of pruners, a lot of socket wrench sets, uh, cleaning supplies, rakes, those kind of things. You can't donate those items to Salvation Army or Savers. So inevitably those things will just get thrown into the trash. And that doesn't make any sense to me. So the store has allowed us to keep those things out of the landfill. Secondly, we're, we're able to sell those items really dirt cheap. If we want to move them along, there's always something else coming in behind them. So that helps out the people that shop at our store. We have a very active uh, Facebook page with some just over 6,600 members. Um, I'd like to think I have my own stalkers that are just out there, but maybe it's just that we have people interested in you know, the stuff that we sell. Um, the third thing that the, the store really needs for me for a goal is I think it's important to give back to the community. I know that I'm a, a fairly fortunate person, uh, having been a social worker for 20 years before I started this business. I saw a lot of people that didn't have a roof off their heads, they were homeless, they had substance abuse issues, they had people that didn't love them, they didn't have a, lot, a large group of friends around them, they struggled to pay their bills. They struggled with uh, hearing voices or, or, or having diabetes or other health issues. So I consider myself fairly fortunate and that I'm fairly healthy. I have friends, uh, I have a little money in the bank, and I have a safe place to sleep at night. And I know there are people right here in our own town that don't have one of those four things. Hence the reason we have two food pantries in this, in this town that are well attended. So I feel it's my obligation as a business owner and a leader in this town to give back to our community. What Good Deeds allows us to do is that Every month, once the sales cover the expenses of running a store, everything over and above that we give to a different local charity. So last month we gave $2,500 to Bay State Community Services, where I sit proudly on that board. This month we're helping out Prayers for Charlotte, which is named after a little girl that had neuroblastoma, which is a form of cancer, and she passed away from that. And her parents, who would love them rather than folding up their tents, like I probably would have done, started a charity in her name with the point of raising enough money to build a little playground in her honor, Braintree. Not only were they able to accomplish that, they now have a road race every April in Braintree. They've raised over $175,000 in that short time with all volunteers. So it's organizations like that that we try to help and try to promote. I think that that uh, helps other people, maybe inspires other people to do good in their town as well and to give back to others. So um, that's what makes us a little bit different uh, than most. Uh, I do work with a lot of elderly people. Uh, I happen to like elderly people a great deal because they're no nonsense and they kind of tell you right where things are. But uh, I wasn't just looking at you, though. <laughs> Bill, I was looking your way. <laughs> the only guy I'm skipping is, is Matt. <laughs> um, but that's basically what we do. I'm a, a proud member of this town. I love Pembroke. I think. Um, as I said to Tiny before he passed away, I had a chance to meet with him at the Business of the Year dinner a couple of years ago. Um, he is the, the model of, of what I've modeled my business afterwards. Because when I moved to Pembroke, all I heard was Tiny and Sons Glass and how they, um, you know, oh, you need something, ask Tiny. And they were always giving to the charities around. They're always helping out. They're always donating whenever they can. And I think that's how businesses should be and how I wanted my business to be. So. Um, I was very pleased to see that Representative Cutler was able to push forward and have that corner named in, in Tiny's honor. I'm very proud to be friends and, and sit on the board with, with Peter and his son. But we have a lot of businesses like that in town, and most of them are me chamber members. And that's what we're trying to bring to this town, too, is a sense of we're all in this together um, with the um, chamber day that we did last summer where they fire and police and chamber members are playing against each other. Thank goodness for your son. He's a good, he's a good <laughs> softball player. Uh, I think we'll make, we'll make it again this year. But those kind of things to try to be a little bit more involved in our community because we all live here and we shall be doing the best we can to make it a, a good community. So. Any questions so, for Jerry? No, maybe you could just put down your 
address and your phone number for the people out there uh, oh, okay. so that they know they may yeah. not know where where your place is sure uh, we are located at 209 water street uh, we are actually facing Scusett street which is route 139 for folks who have been here in town long enough it used to be the old q time billiards but we also have pembroke dry cleaners on the same floor and then kathy joe's dance studio uh, club on one side they can reach. Uh, they can reach me at 781-308-4447, or they can visit us on the web at www.dirtydeedscheap.com or www.gooddeedsstore.com. And if people want to join our Facebook page for Good Deeds, um, I don't know how to explain how to do that other than go to the search bar and type in Good Deeds their store, and it will come up, and uh, you'll ask to join, and, and I will allow you to join. So that's basically how people reach us. And we're headed into our busy season, so. You know, call early, call often, as they like to say, and also um, the big fan of people taking advantage of their natural resources. Pembroke, I, I say this nonstop, Pembroke has the best deal going of all the towns around here for trash pickup. I remember the days when we put out seven barrels and one big item a week. You have to call ahead now and put out the one big item a week, but it costs us $80 to throw a mattress and box spring the entire dumpster. Pass that along to you. If you can put those out, if you're... Uh, the big trash day is Tuesday. We'll come to your house and work with you on Monday. We'll haul those out and put it out curbside. The homeowner has to call ahead, but that will save them $80. So Pembroke's really very generous in their trash pickup. That is not common in the areas around us. Any other questions for Janet? Well, just a more of a statement. Um, I, I don't think there's anybody in town that doesn't know who you are, as a matter of fact. So, um, as long as I'm not in the police blotter, I figure that's a good thing. I well, the chief, is, the chief the is here. Blotter. I was wondering why. <laughs> 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 but um, you've been honored by the chamber, by the Commonwealth of Mass, uh, by just about everybody in your organization. And Tiny Brown was an extraordinary uh, guy, and uh, there's nobody better to model their business after than Tiny Brown. I had two comments, if I may. The first one is, uh, I've been to your store, and I can uh, tell the folks at home if you like to uh, take an hour or two and do some browsing and some shopping, it's a great place to go. I was amazed at what is in your store. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the second thing I'd like to say is that uh, I, I would I would like to thank you for all the work that you have done and are doing at the Council on Aging. Uh, things are really humming along there, and uh, a lot of it has to do with the Council on Aging board and the friends of the Council on Aging. So thank you for all the work that you've done with them. I give a lot of credit to Anna Sierra. She's been a great hire. And, um, it's been just over a year, and things are really going well. And she has been. Thank you. I just have uh, uh, one. Not a question, but just a comment that I've also been there. Uh, myself, uh, we're looking for some things for the boys club. Uh, went there and uh, picked them up at a very, very uh, cheap price. And uh, was while I was there, uh, they donated uh, some heavy bags uh, for the boys club so the kids could work out on. So we appreciate that. Yep, you never know what comes in. So <laughs> it's an adventure every day. Well, I appreciate the kind words. It's, it's very good. I appreciate that. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, gentlemen. And we, we look forward to thank the Chamber of Commerce coming in. I know you guys in. are in the hot seat on a regular basis, so <laughs> thank you for your service, and um, you know, hopefully people appreciate the work that you all do. Well, I hope everybody uh, heard all of the wonderful charity work that you, you and your company do. And uh, I know you've won awards for doing that, but uh, people should know that. And, uh, so you're doing a great job, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Well, kindness mm -hmm. is uh, contagious. You know, so you put it out there, you drop a pebble, and you hope it spreads. At least it's spreading in our community. And um, you know, I'm very proud of the work we do. And my staff is just wonderful and kind. And so far, so good. Very good. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. Thank, Thank you. Very much. We wish you success so that you can continue. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, the second item that we have uh, before us here is uh, a review of the surplus property auction for a parcel <coughs> of land on Bartlett Street. Uh, the town fulfilled its obligation with the, with the advertising of it, and um, uh, we have some, uh, we have a responder to it. Uh, we set a minimum bid, and uh, 
Stockton. We heard from our legal department, and our legal department informed us that we need to put this purchase of the property on Bartlett Street uh, in an article before the May town, town meeting. And uh, upon approval of that article and uh, a mutually satisfactory purchase and sale agreement, uh, we can move forward on that. And uh, we have a motion before us that we need to make. And I will <coughs> ask Arthur. Okay. Um, move to award to Kimberly J. Dickinson and Dean Kavicki an agreement for purchase of the assessor's parcel number B23115, known as Bartlett Street, with the Town of Pembroke for the amount of $2,600 pending annual town meeting approval on May 9th, 2017, and the execution of a mutually satisfactory purchase and sale agreement. A motion by Arthur. Is there a second? Second, second by Bill. Any questions? Question. Question, Dan. Uh, Ed, could you just uh, describe for the board and for the public uh, that is this process done with every property that Pembroke sells? And if, and if you could just explain further. Well, so we have two sets of knowledge. properties that are available for disposal. One is um, a property such as this, which was deeded to the town in 1984 and a subsequent town meeting accepted the property and with no restrictions. And then you might have a, uh, actually a third category um, where you would have uh, property that had some restrictions where there would be isolated for DPW purposes or for conservation purposes. We've taken properties in the past that were under the care and custody of the Board of Selectmen and turn them over to the Conservation Commission for open space. And then we have those properties that are um, acquired by the town for a lack of payment of taxes. And those are called tax title properties. Um, and, and those properties we have auctioned off in the past, never needing town meeting approval. Um, unfortunately, this category requires town meeting approval to be um, to be disposed of by the Board of Selectmen and therefore um, Town Council t today ruled and, and, and gave us guidance regarding the motion. And so Sabrina and I are going to request that that article <coughs> be placed, uh, have the Board of Selectmen open the uh, special town meeting warrant tonight no. and then we will conclude that. Can we do it next week with the other one? Wh whatever works for you. Next week we'll do both at the same time if okay. that's okay. Yeah, so we're going to ask the board to open a special that. town meeting so that when the uh, vote occurs on May the 9th, that property would will be um, available the next day as opposed to waiting till July 1st if it was uh, at the annual town meeting. So uh, just a, f a further question, I understand that and I understand that process. Uh, one question that may come up from, from the public. Uh, that maybe you can answer now, and, and if not, uh, talk to town council and, and ask them. Uh, town council has had this on their plate. They've known about this <coughs> property for a uh, uh, couple of months now. Uh, why is this determination I just coming I don't have down an answer now? for that. Why we found out today that yeah. town council ruled that we needed to have a town meeting room. I cannot answer that. Okay. So uh, I, don't, I don't think there's an, an issue going before a town meeting with this. Uh, I think the Board of Selectmen can support uh, the, the loan. This was a loan bid uh, on this particular property. Uh, and it's uh, just <coughs> a mechanism that we need to uh, go forward with to execute this, this deal. So I don't think there's a problem with it. Uh, the only thing that I would um, like town council to think of in the future is if if there's a property like this, if they can let uh, the interested parties know uh, ahead of time. And it would have been, uh, we would have appreciated knowing about it in advance as well. Sure. I wasn't thrilled that we found out about it this afternoon. Any other questions about this? No, I agree with Dan. I think it's a matter of formality to go through this. And, um, you know, it only makes sense for um, Kimberly and Dean to have the property because they think they're the neighbors on three sides of it and the fourth side is the street. So it really makes uh, only sense that they have it. So um, it's a mile of red tape, but it'll be worth it in the end. Very good. 
So do we need a motion to continue this till next week? No, no, you can, no. It, you no, can, we can make the motion it. right now. It's just opening the warrant to include that article that Sabrina has requested we postpone for a week. Okay. Right. So do we need a postponement for a week? That's what I was asking. No, no, we were requesting okay. you act on that motion tonight. Right. And we have a we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, it's unanimous. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Come right up Probably front, please. I am by now, right? <laughs> I'm not Kimberly, I'm Dean. But uh, <laughs> I just want to know what the formality is. So we were the only bidder, which I'm glad we were. Uh, so May 9th, you put this in front of a regular town meeting. And what do you just bring it up to the public? So who, does somebody have to vote on it? Or does your yep. vote count? Or how does that work? Well, well, their votes count. I mean, they're registered voters, so. Yeah, it'll be a vote <laughs> of the town meeting, but quite honestly, I mean, they'll see it for what it is. That okay. Well, who votes? It's good for That's the town. what my question is. Town the town entire meeting. town meeting. Anybody who's there? Right. Yeah. All who's 150 people. Oh, 150 people. You'll be voted May 9th, 7 o'clock at the high school. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good way to get you there, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So, <laughs> you just say this is what we did. And yeah, it'll come up as an article, um, okay. one out of probably ten or eight or whatever it is on a special town meeting, and um, the voters are pretty sharp. They they get it, okay. so um, I don't think that there's a danger that they'll, uh, right. you know, turn it into something that it isn't. As well, I said, if I said this would take a year, and it'll be a year exactly in May. So, <laughs> but anyway, all right. Well, thank you guys very much. I appreciate right. everything you've done for us. So. Okay. Under board action items, uh, we have uh, articles 11 through 18 uh, for inclusion in the annual town meeting warrant. And uh, so uh, we would need uh, a vote if you would so desire to add these articles. Uh, this my. Uh, my agenda it says articles 11 through 18, but uh, we have more articles than that. Is that an issue, Mr. Thorne? No, did... Uh, I wonder if you folks... What did you folks... Uh, we we vote voted on last 1 week? through 10, which we deem to be routine articles. You did yeah. one through ten, you did marijuana, and then you did the petitions. Okay. So right. the only ones left in here are the remainder. And that's 11 through 18? 11 through 20, and 22 through 27. Okay. Because 21 was marijuana. Okay. Are there any questions by the board on any of these articles? And if there isn't any, I uh, look for a motion to add uh, these articles for inclusion in the warrant. Mr. Chairman, to move Article 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Second. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. A motion by Bill and a second by Arthur. Question. Uh, question. <coughs> so, to, to the town administrator, Ed. Uh, all these articles as presented here, uh, the monetary values of what we can see here, are they part of uh, your proposed balance, balance budget? No, they're not. No. No. The uh, game plan for the town meeting is to have each of the proponents of these articles explain the need at town meeting for these particular articles and that the uh, consensus among the the department heads that are proposing that is that they will use town meeting as a forum uh, to begin the process mm -hmm. of uh, informing the public uh, between now and next year as to the need for those particular articles and uh, and we have Chief Wall here who um, you know will be one of those uh, department heads that will s stand up and, and explain to the to the full town meeting and to the people that are watching uh, on TV about the need for his proposed article. Right. So uh, 
that's it seemed like a small question to add but it's a very important one not just for this board but for the advisory committee uh, to the department heads that are advocates of uh, their articles and you know ultimately town meeting in the community to, to vote on it so I would hope that uh, the proponents have uh, built their case so that they can bring it to town meeting fo floor and uh, you gather up as much uh, as support as they can and I also hope that town administrator the accountant and the advisory committee uh, have contingency plans in place uh, should these go through uh, you don't have to say what they are uh, tonight Ed but it's uh, something you already know intuitively uh, and that that your job as the head financial officer of the town uh, but it's uh, I, I need to bring it out in the public forum. Sure. Point okay. well taken. Very good. Okay, so uh, we need to vote on this motion. All those in favor of uh, Bill's motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, that's unanimous. Uh, our next action item is to vote articles to be included in the special within the annual town meeting warrant. And uh, in front of us, we have five articles. And uh, you had a chance to look over these articles. Are there any questions? If there isn't, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Well, I, I'll, I'll move that we include the five articles, but I'm um, hoping for a second for discussion. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Arthur, seconded by Bill, and uh, discussion, Arthur. Yeah, as I was reading um, the article and listening to Dan, um, he made a valid point in that, you know, that we're not necessarily supporting these as much as we are giving the ad, um, advocacy groups an opportunity to come and be heard, and uh, I think that's the important difference, that there may be some that we don't necessarily support, but... Um, we're giving the public the opportunity to be the ultimate voter. That's correct. Any other comments or questions? Um, we have a motion and a second, and we've concluded our discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. That's unanimous. We're going to have a discussion by Mr. Fawn on uh, the municipal user fee abatement process. And uh, I'll turn it over to you, Ed. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, <coughs> you have a, a handout that is um, several pages long um, that includes a summary sheet and a sample abatements that we have for the uh, municipal uh, trash program. Um, I'd like the board to be to look at this for a couple of weeks, um, it shows uh, the board exactly what abatements uh, are allowed under the current system. And uh, they range from senior citizen abatements to other means of private disposal of trash, uh, summer residence requirements, uh, vacancy requirements, meaning the house is vacant and no trash is picked up there. Um, some that don't necessarily uh, are applied for a lot, um, multi-unit requirements and in-law apartments, um, these, are, these are rare. Um, the ones that we definitely deal with all the time are senior citizen, other means of private disposal, summer residence, and vacancy. So I'd like the board just to, to look at this, you know, for about a week or two and then we'll bring that up for discussion and uh, we'll explain uh, the kinds of abatements that occur and if the, any members of the board have questions regarding the forms or the abatement process you know please feel free to send me an email or give me a call and I'll be happy to explain that to you so uh, that's it for now Mr. Chairman okay uh, Mr. Chairman can I just Fred? can I just ask um, uh, Chief Wall if he's going to be here for a little while are you going to stay till the end of the meeting? Do you know? Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Bye. Uh, any questions from the board on Ed's proposal on these abatement procedures? Uh, would it be acceptable 
Uh, Mr. Thon will put a, a two week time frame on this. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. So we'll put this down for discussion in two weeks. Um, okay. Now, Mr. Thon, I'll turn to you again on the next issue, which is uh, to a draft letter from the Board of Selectmen supporting a uh, heavy commercial vehicle exclusion on Valley and Birch Streets. It's part of the application process with MassDOT because um, towns just can't unilaterally um, ban trucks on streets. You need the permission of the Department of Transportation to do this. And obviously in this case, um, Valley and Birch Street uh, originated in the town of Duxbury, so we're going to need the assistance of the town of Duxbury and they'll be acting on a similar letter uh, shortly. And uh, then we'll prepare the application <coughs> that will have these letters support and then uh, information that are being furnished by the Old Colony Planning Council about the, the percentage of truck traffic on these two streets. I might add that of the streets that we have excluded trucks on, Oak Street, uh, Water Street, uh, Brick Hill Lane, Mountain Avenue, High Street, of the numbers that we've encountered uh, in the past 15 years or so, the numbers on Valley and Birch Street are off the charts. 5% um, and higher is what's required by Mass DOT to, uh, to ban truck traffic. And, and I might and also add Mill Street and West Street is two other streets that have truck exclusions. Um, in the case of Valley and Birch, these numbers are double digits. Uh, they're like in the 12 to 13 percent range, which is the highest that we've seen for any street. So um, obviously, the, there's a lot of east-west traffic in that part of town, uh, connecting Route 53 with Route 27. Uh, that appears to be the, the reason for that truck traffic. You can't eliminate local traffic, you know, whether it's a delivery truck or a construction situation, but if it's if it's uh, uh, heavy vehicles that are going to use Pembroke as a shortcut, then that's one of the things that we put in the application. Also, you have to provide an alternate means of getting around Birch and Valley Street. And basically it would be using um, state numbered routes. So that would mean going up 53 to Route 14 or Route 53 you know, down to Route 27 would have you. So those are things that we put in the application. And uh, with the assistance of the Old Colony Planning Council, we put together, you know, the cover letter with all the uh, supporting backup materials. So um, as part of the process, we're asking the board to, to sign those letters of, of support for the project. Okay, do we, uh, when will we have those letters to sign? Next Monday. Okay. There's no day tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully next Monday. <laughs> we'll have it for uh, for the board to sign next Monday. Okay. Any questions for Ed? Dan. Um, yeah, Ed. I don't know if it should emanate from this board, but maybe a note from you to the uh, Old Colony Planning Council will su suffice. Uh, as part of these truck exclusions. Uh, I wonder if an, an, another step, a next step, an added step uh, could be taken as well. Uh, maybe not from, as they say, from this board, but from the Old Colony Planning Council and on through to the, uh, the DOT and even further, that we could actively petition, petition uh, big outfits like Google Maps, Waze, to put these truck exclusions in their system because they may or may not know about them. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, that's something that I'll bring up to that's the Old County Plan mm -hmm. Planning Council the next meeting. Uh, but if you, if you could send them a note mm -hmm. and just uh, uh, put it on their upcoming agenda, uh, in, in, in case uh, I, I don't have the opportunity to bring it up at that meeting, uh, because that's really where it's really going to count uh, and where we are now. GPS. If the GPS tells tells the truck driver sure. don't go on this road, uh, that says more than a sign can. So mm -hmm. I think that's the next step in this day and age. Right. 
and, and, and Chief Wall and I have had this conversation many times regarding that and that you know that's why we're finding you know uh, you know the, the real spike in 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 some of the traffic counts and Birch Street <laughs> and, and uh, Valley Street are just incredibly off the charts good thank you so we'll have that in a uh, week uh, next item on our agenda is uh, we have a note from the Conservation Commission uh, they have uh, they want us to move to accept the resignation of Sharon Tools from conservation effective immediately. Move to accept the resignation of uh, Sharon Tools with regret. Second. A motion by Bill, second by Arthur. Are there any questions? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Unanimous. Uh, we need to discuss and come up with a recommendation to a po uh, to appoint uh, a selectman's representative to the uh, community preservation committee. Uh, seems last week we accepted the resignation, and uh, according to the Community Preservation Act and the vote that was taken by the town of Pembroke um, in 2008. Uh, we have members on that board, uh, but uh, okay. okay. Just go ahead. I, d I haven't heard anyone suggest that it, that anything be changed. So if I, I know I know you've mentioned that, but. I don't think there's an, anyone on this board or anyone in the community that wants to change any of the rules. Uh, I think the, the what was just mentioned in the letter that we we read tonight and Bill read out loud is that a best practice would be to be have someone from the community, and that's what we're going to attempt to do. But if we can't find someone from the community, uh, and, a, and if a board of, a member of the board of selectmen needs to sit on the committee uh, in, in, in the interim, especially with town meeting coming up. Uh, I don't have an issue with that. And I don't think the public should should either. Uh, so, but no one is trying to no one's trying to change any rules that, that I've seen. So I just want to make sure that that that's not on the table. From what my understanding. Yeah. Well, it's not on my table. Okay. Because <laughs> but you mentioned it twice. So I just want to make sure I the did, public is because isn't Bill read this letter and and uh, I don't even know why <coughs> that letter has even got here because I believe it was a misunderstanding from our previous meeting when I identified the person that resigned was a selectman's appointee and we needed to find someone else and I think somebody took that and said oh now they want to put a selectman on there well we might which is uh, and we which, can well we can yes yeah. we can but I, I would I would vote to do that if somebody would tell me why it's necessary in view of all the good work that's been done up to now. I mean, if it's I just the case of not ever getting a report back here from the two people that are on there to represent us, then let's let's fix that problem. But if a selectman wants to be on there, I don't really have a problem with it. Yeah, I, I, it, it will, we'll bring it up in two weeks, obviously, but it's, but it's here on the table now. It, I think the, the best practice, for, for especially for this committee, this type of committee, is to have uh, reach out to the public and have someone from the public at large uh, have the seat. But if we can't get someone that's from the, from the public, and we, we have had difficulties in the past getting the public to uh, be seated in the committees, uh, then I think it's incumbent upon the selectmen to make sure someone from this board is seated there, uh, whether in a, uh, appointed from the public or someone uh, uh, or a member of the board of selectmen, especially with town meeting coming up. Mm -hmm. um, well, we've got two weeks to make a concerted effort and a good faith effort to fill the seat. 
and we've got over 10,000 registered voters. We're bound to find one out of 10,000 that'll take the uh, CPC seat. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Okay, so we're going to table this for two weeks then. Okay. Uh, we're uh, in possession of uh, a notice from the Council on Aging Board of Directors that they have uh, two vacancies and <coughs> they have met and they are recommending the appointment of Carrie Bowman and Joseph, Ry uh, Joseph Ryan uh, to be associate members of the Council on Aging Board. Move the appointment of Ms. Uh, Bowman and Mr. Ryan. Motion by Arthur. Is there a second? Second. Second by Matthew. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, at unanimous. Thank you. Um, we have the minutes of the Selectman's meeting of February 27th. And move the minutes of February 27th as written. A motion by Arthur and a second by Bill. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, that's unanimous. Uh, do we have any old business that <coughs> anyone would like to bring up? Hearing none, we'll move to the town administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, you've got a uh, handout that talks about the hazardous Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day will be held at the Pembroke Recycling Center on Saturday, April the 15th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Items which are acceptable and not acceptable are listed on the town website at www.pembroke-ma.gov. You must be a town resident, have a current recycling sticker, and you cannot dispose of business or commercial hazardous waste. I just have one question. Question, Bill, yes. Does it cost anybody to bring any of this hazardous waste to the recycling center on hazardous waste day? No. Okay, so that's all free. So if somebody it's has all, um, it's 15 all paid gallons for of paint laying around their house or whatever, <coughs> they want exactly to bring right. it, then uh, they can do that. There's no cost to them. Right. Okay, good. Uh, we have a line item so, uh, that's in our solid waste budget. That account that accounts for that. Very good, thank you. Uh, ask the selectmen uh, any issues from the board. Uh, moving on to new business. Is there any new business anyone would like to discuss? Hearing none. Uh, upcoming issues for the board on March 20th. We'll have a public hearing, a street acceptance for. Uh, Equestrian Way and Pheasant Lane. On March 27th, uh, Jennifer Mathias, the Hillbog Project Update. Also, March 27th, a Wage and Personnel Board Appointment, Deborah Wall, Library Director on Articles. She wants to discuss with the board her articles. Uh, do we have a need for executive session, Mr. Fon? No, sir. No, sir. Thank you. The next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen is March 20th at 7 p.m. Any other business to come before Mr. Chairman, the board? Yes. Just would like the board to know and the public to know that town hall offices, the library, the Council on Aging, will be closed due to the upcoming inclement weather and I believe the school department also has announced that schools will be closed tomorrow. Okay. Chief Wall, did you would you like to address the board? No, I just didn't know if you were going to have any questions on some of the articles I put in, so I was okay. that, but we're open tomorrow. <laughs> 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 the police Thank department you will be on duty uh, tomorrow. Uh, well, what, well, we have you here, uh, Chief, as part of uh, co-director of the emergency management uh, in town. Uh, is there is there any information ahead of the storm you'd like to put out there for the public? The uh, latest update is the storm has moved a little bit westward, so we're hopefully going to get maybe a little more rain, a little less snow. 
but still, if you don't have to travel tomorrow, don't let the DPW take care of the roads. Stay off the roads as best you can. Uh, there's a parking ban in effect as of, I think, 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, all through uh, all through Tuesday and into uh, Wednesday morning. So let's give the DPW an opportunity to clean up after this mess and uh, stay safe. And one other thing, uh, people are wondering, uh, wondering about your trash pickup. It's delayed for a day. Don't put your trash barrels out. Tomorrow with the wind we're expecting, it's going to get blown up anyway. So right. Let's just up or down and take the day. If you can stay home, stay home. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, no other issues before us. Take a motion to adjourn. So move, Mr. Chairman. Move to adjourn by Arthur. Is a second? Second. Second by Matthew. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much uh, for watching this evening, and we'll see you next Monday evening at 7 p.m. Thank you.